stomach pain, indigestion, or a change in your bowel habits? Could it just be something you ate or the early warning signs of cancer? Today, we're putting colon cancer and stomach cancer side by side. Both of these cancers often start quietly with symptoms you might brush off as everyday digestive issues. But here's the thing, the way they show up, spread, and get treated is completely different. In this video, we'll uncover the crucial differences most people don't know. By the end of this video, you'll be able to recognize the unique warning signs, understand how doctors diagnose them, and know what treatment paths actually look like. So, let's start with the basics. Colon cancer, sometimes called colorectal cancer, starts in the large intestine, usually in the inner lining of the colon or rectum. Most cases begin as small growths called polyps, which can turn into cancer over time if not removed. Stomach cancer, also called gastric cancer, starts in the lining of the stomach. Most stomach cancers are adenocarcinomas, which means they start in glandular cells. Now, both cancers involve the digestive system, but they're quite different in how they start, who they affect, and how they behave. Let's move on to risk factors. For colon cancer, age is a major one. It's most common after 50, though younger cases are rising. A family history of colon cancer or inherited syndromes like Lynch syndrome and familial adenomatous polyposis significantly raise risk. Lifestyle is huge here. Diets high in red or processed meats, low fiber intake, obesity, smoking, heavy alcohol use, and lack of physical activity all contribute. Inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis also increases risk. For stomach cancer, the risk profile is different. Chronic infection with Helicobacter pylori bacteria is the biggest factor. It causes long-term inflammation of the stomach lining, which can lead to cancer over time. Diets high in salted, smoked, or pickled foods raise risk, which is why stomach cancer has been more common in places like East Asia. Smoking is another contributor. Family history plays a role here too. And inherited conditions like hereditary diffuse gastric cancer can predispose someone. Age, being male, and certain conditions like pernicious anemia also increase risk. All right, now signs and symptoms. For colon cancer, early stages often cause no symptoms, which is why screening is so important. When symptoms do appear, they may include changes in bowel habits like diarrhea, constipation, or narrowing of the stool, blood in the stool, abdominal discomfort, weakness, and unexplained weight loss. Sometimes anemia from chronic bleeding is the first clue. Stomach cancer symptoms are also vague at first. They may include indigestion, bloating after meals, nausea, and loss of appetite. As it progresses, weight loss, abdominal pain, vomiting, and sometimes vomiting blood can occur. Black terry stools may also appear if there's bleeding. Advanced stomach cancer can cause difficulty swallowing if the tumor is near the top of the stomach. Both cancers can cause fatigue and weakness due to blood loss or poor nutrition. So, why do these symptoms happen? In colon cancer, bleeding and obstruction come from the tumor narrowing or damaging the intestinal wall. In stomach cancer, symptoms come from inflammation, irritation, or the tumor physically interfering with digestion. Now, diagnosis. For colon cancer, colonoscopy is the gold standard. It allows doctors to see the inside of the colon, remove polyps, and take biopsies. Stool tests, like FIT or fecal immunochemical tests, can detect hidden blood and are used for screening. CT scans and MRIs may be used for staging. For stomach cancer, diagnosis usually starts with an upper endoscopy. A camera is passed down into the stomach and suspicious areas are biopsied. Imaging like CT scans or endoscopic ultrasound helps determine how deep the tumor goes and whether lymph nodes or other organs are involved. Blood tests may show anemia, but they're not specific. Now let's compare treatment. For colon cancer, surgery is usually the main treatment for localized disease. Removing the affected section of colon along with nearby lymph nodes. Chemotherapy is often used after surgery if the cancer is more advanced or has spread to lymph nodes. Radiation isn't used much for colon cancer but can play a role in rectal cancer, where it helps shrink tumors before surgery. For stomach cancer, treatment also starts with surgery if possible. Gastrectomy, which means removing part or all of the stomach, plus lymph nodes. Chemotherapy and radiation are commonly used before or after surgery to improve outcomes. For advanced stomach cancer, targeted therapies like trastuzumab for her two positive tumors and immunotherapy drugs like pembrolizumab are now being used. Side effects overlap but differ in impact. After colon surgery, patients may have changes in bowel habits or in some cases need a temporary or permanent colostomy bag. After stomach surgery, patients may experience problems digesting food, early fullness, or nutritional deficiencies because the stomach plays a key role in absorption. 
Chemotherapy and immunotherapy have side effects like fatigue, nausea, diarrhea, or immune-related inflammation in both cancers. If you are finding this video helpful so far, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Now, prognosis. Colon cancer outcomes are strongly tied to stage. If caught early when the cancer is still in the lining of the colon, five-year survival rates are over 90%. But if it spreads to distant organs like the liver or lungs, survival drops significantly. Screening is the reason colon cancer outcomes have improved in many countries. It catches polyps and early cancers before they spread. Stomach cancer, unfortunately, is often caught late because early symptoms are so vague. Survival rates are much lower than for colon cancer when looking worldwide. In early stage disease, surgery plus therapy can be very effective, but advanced gastric cancer has a poorer prognosis. That said, survival is improving thanks to targeted drugs and immunotherapy. Globally, there's an interesting difference. Colon cancer is more common in Western countries, largely due to lifestyle and diet, but its rates are rising in Asia. Stomach cancer is more common in Asia and parts of South America, but has been declining in many regions due to better food storage, reduced smoking, and widespread treatment of H. pylori infection. So, final thoughts. Colon cancer and stomach cancer may both involve the digestive system, but they're different diseases with different risk factors and behaviors. Colon cancer is driven more by lifestyle, genetics, and polyps that turn into cancer, while stomach cancer is heavily linked to H. pylori, diet, and chronic inflammation. Symptoms overlap but are slightly different. Colon cancer often shows up as blood in the stool or bowel changes, while stomach cancer may appear as indigestion, early fullness, or weight loss. Both are treatable, especially when caught early, and both are seeing better outcomes thanks to advances in surgery, chemotherapy, and immunotherapy. But prevention and screening are key. Colonoscopies for colon cancer and awareness of reflux, or H. pylori infection for stomach cancer. And that wraps up our comparison of colon cancer versus stomach cancer. If you found this helpful, share it with someone who might benefit, and I'll see you in the next one.